name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred celebration. Together, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the beginning of the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians, God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith, and labor of love, and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowingly, brothers and sisters, loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. You know what sort of people we were among you for your sake. In every place, your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declared about us what sort of reception we have come among you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers from the coming of the wrath. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord takes delight in his people. 
The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song, a praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbre and harp. Let, for the Lord loves his people, and he adorns the lowly with victory. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their, their cultures. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. The Lord takes delight to him his people. Please rise to honor the Holy Gospel. According to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, to you Lord. Jesus said to his to the crowds and to his disciples, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You lack the kingdom of heaven before men. You do not enter yourselves, nor do you allow entrance to those trying to enter. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You traverse sea and land to make one convert. And when that happens, you make him a child of Gehenna, twice as much as yourselves. Woe to you, blind guides, who says, if one swears by the temples, it means nothing. But if you swear by the gold of the temple, one is obligated. Blind fools, which is greater, the gold or the temple? That made the gold sacred. And you say, if one swears by the altar, it means nothing. But if one swears by the gift on the altar, one is obligated. You blind ones, which is greater, the gift or the altar, that makes the gift sacred. One who swears by the altar swears by it and all that is upon it. One who swears by the temple swears by it, and by him who dwells in it. One who swears by heaven swears by the throne of God, and by him who is seated on it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated, my dear brothers and sisters. Good morning. One of the most essential or very important gift that God has given to us men is the gift of choice. The gift of choice. Ang choice 
was designed by God for us to choose what is good, what is right, and what is on the side of God. So wala himo ang choice aron mo pili kita sa sayuk. Aron mo pili kita sa dautan. No? Gihatag ang choice for us to choose what is good and what is in favor of God. No? Now, when the devil started to tempt Adam and Eve kay for the devil ang choice nindot kayo nga gasa so that the devil started to tempt man and when man succumb to the temptation he started to destroy the design of choice so that nabahiran na ugsala no? ang choice. Dili na lamang para in favor of God, but this time, because of sin, man started to abuse this gift of choice. No? In other words, my dear brothers and sisters, whenever we choose to do what is wrong, what is not good for us, what is against the will of God it is an abuse of the gift of choice that God has given us no? kini mangon nga choice usa kini siya nga nindot kayo nga faculty ang atong will no? di ba ingon nga we have the intellect so that we will understand no? and we have the will so that we can choose what is good. No? So that the more educated you are, the more knowledgeable you are, the better you will decide. No? Mas nindot ang imong mga desisyon because you are, you know things better. No? O kini nga choice, mao kini siya ang nakapa mas hataas ang atong level punta sa mga hayop. We are considered animals but we are higher than animal. Animals, they act by their instinct. We, man, we act by our choice. No? We act by our choice. We decide. No? Now, that's why there is a, if you have listened well, the, the first reading, Paul was happy. Why Paul was happy? Because the converts, the new converts, they chose God ilang gipili ang Diyos. They prioritize God. In contrast, in the gospel, nga nung dun ay daghan nga mga woo si Kristo nga to sa mga hypocrites, nga mga Pharisees o scribes, kining mga alaot ba? Ning na ni Kristo, alaot ka mo, mga scribes and Pharisees, nga man, because there is hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. They choose to do what is not of God. Maayo lang sila musulti sa mga Diyos noon nga mga panultihon, but they are not doing what they are saying. What they were saying. That's why gitawag ni Kristo sila nga mga alaot. Mga alaot. Because they choose to do what is not of God. My dear brothers and sisters, this is our vocation. This is our call. Whatever choice you have, no? whatever decision you have, we have to see to it that it is always in accordance with the will of God. It is always in accordance with God's goodness. Si Bishop Bactol na numdum ko, ingon siya, once ang tawo mo muabot na sa hamtong nga panuigon, he has to make three choices. Choice for a mate, choice for a master, and choice for a mission. And this is very common among us. 
this is what we usually do, no? Kung muabot na kita sa hamtong na panuigan. And we hope that these three choices would always be in accordance with the will of God. Because this is our vocation. No? This is the call that God has given us. No? So my dear brothers and sisters, let us continue to pray for God's grace. No? You know, it is not easy to live a life of a Christian. Especially in the world nga daghan kayog mga mga tentasyon. No? In the midst of temptations. No? Dili sa yun ang pagpili sa kabuboton sa Diyos. To choose what is God's. No? But we need a grace. We need grace. No? Kinahanglan nato ang grasya gikan sa Diyos to sustain us no? that we would always be able to do what is right and to do things that is in favor of God. No? We continue with the offertory. that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For our good and for the good of all His Church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your Church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, most holy through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Your word 
through whom you made all things, whom you sent is our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore this gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying Take this, all of you, and eat a bit, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Rex, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with and your spirit. Spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you.
the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. for yourself a people by adoption. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning.
Jet Test. We would like to request everyone to please proceed uh, for the processional.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Biliran Province State University's 42nd Commencement Exercises and First Virtual Graduation Rites. The Processional. The candidates for graduation with Latin Honors from the School of Teacher Education, Bachelor of Elementary Education. The faculty. The program chairperson. The unit heads and staff. The school deeds. The campus directress. The Vice President The Acting University and Board Secretary and the University Mays The University Board of Regents Guests and the University President. Ladies and gentlemen, the entrance of colors.
tayo nang tumayo at ilagay ang kanang kamay sa dibdib at sabay-sabay nating awitin ang pambansang awit ng Republika ng Pilipinas. Biliran Province State University, Biliran Campus Class of 2020, University Board of Regents, key officials, faculty and staff, ladies and gentlemen, with distinct honor and privilege, allow me to introduce our commencement speaker. He serves the commission by progressively leading the advancement of a wide array of relevant and timely disciplines in higher education. 
This is exemplified through his work as the Oversight Commissioner for Teacher Education and Teacher Quality. Also on Gender and Development Extension Programs for State Universities and Colleges in the Southeast Asian Regional Center for Tropical Biology, Simeo Biotrope, and as champion for future thinking and cultural education. He is grounded in his beliefs that progressive advancements in higher education can be achieved by holistically supporting higher education institutions to be of service to faculty and students. By reflecting on previous policies and experiences, by collaborating with agencies, both public and private. Also on local and international, and by having a more refined foresight to prepare students, regardless of ethnicity, gender, socioeconomic status, and religion, for the world of tomorrow. Included in his notable accomplishments in the time of COVID-19 pandemic are spearheading the Eastern Visayas Higher Education Institutions Flexible Learning Management Systems Consortium in Region 8, leading the working on resilience and innovation for teaching excellence in Region 11 and organized a region-wide flexible learning initiatives and consortium programs of the 170 higher education institutions of Region 5 in partnership with the Bicol Foundation for Higher Education. Through his remarkable leadership, these consortia helped in leading the redefinition of higher education in the new normal. In addition to his work in flexible learning, he is also a human rights and gender rights advocate. He leads in the institutionalization of gender transformative practices, such as envisioning the revitalized gender resource centers for the regional offices of CHED and encourages the SUC presidents in, the real, real, in realizing gender sensitive infrastructures as well as the creation of gender responsive mechanisms that will address gender and development issues and concerns for higher education system. He also leads the promotion of cultural education in higher education, a step necessary to ensure the, respect, the respectful preservation of Philippine culture and the arts for succeeding generations. This includes developing cultural offices in the various universities, including culture-based education in higher education curricula and supporting universities to document best practices through updated multimedia forms. His support for the arts is also celebrated to his work as an accredited faculty of the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, NCCA, handling the Philippine Cultural Education Program, Graduate Diploma in Cultural Education, and Graduate Diploma in Teaching Arts. He's also a widely published and passionate researcher. He co-authored some of the publications of notable malariologists and protozoologists in UP Manila in collaboration with Ganma School of Medicine in Japan. The published researches include clinical and laboratory correlate correlates of cerebral malaria in the Philippines, published in the Transaction of Royal Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene, application of seriopidemiology in the evaluation in a community-based malaria control program in Palawan, Philippines published in the Japanese Journal of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene, Management of Severe Malaria in Asian Countries, published in the Clinical Parasitology Journal. Intamoiba Histolytica and Intamoiba Dispar, 
detection by polymerase chain reaction in a low prevalence region in the Philippines and a prospective study of complicated malaria in the Philippines published in the Parasitology International Journals. He recounts that his research in the fields of malariology, biotechnology, parasitology, and, pub and public health has been greatly inspired by his former boss and mentor in UP College of Public Health, Dr. Pilaria Tongol Rivera. Prior to his appointment as CHED Commissioner, he has served the Commission or he has served the higher education landscape in various capacities as Director for Human Resource of Management Services of the La Salle Philippines, as Head of the HR Commission of the the Lasallian School Network, and as Vice President for Academic Services at St. Paul University, Surigao, as Dean of the Graduate School of St. Paul University, Manila, and as Vice President for Research, Planning, and Extension Services of the Pamantasa ng Lungsod ng Marikina, as Associate Professorial Lecturer at the Lasalle University, Manila, Brother Andrew Gonzalez College of Education and as adjunct faculty of various higher education institutions like Holy Angel University, Far Eastern University, University of Santo Tomas, and De La Salle College of St. Benil. He finished his Doctor of Philosophy in Educational Leadership and Management and has earned PhD units in Science Education, major in Biology, and finished his Master of Education major in school leadership at De La Salle University, Manila. He also has a master's degree in medical technology at the University of Santo Tomas. He is a certified human resources professional, a registered medical technologist, and a registered nurse. On top of all these academic pursuits and behind all these noteworthy accomplishments, he maintains his primary role in life as a devoted family man and a loving husband to his wife, Marisel. He managed to preserve the good quality of his household and the virtuous upbringing of his two kids. He continues his advocacy related to raising the consciousness of the Filipino people in the rapid and exponential changes brought by the Fourth Industrial Revolution, enhancing the implementation of transnational education as an effective tool of adapting into the globalized world, supporting the achievement of an efficient, responsive, and relevant teacher education, and ensuring the realization of culture-based education as one of the core objectives in the Philippine higher education system. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming via virtual floor our commencement speaker, the Commissioner on the Higher Education and the Chairperson of the BIPSO Governing Board, Dr. Aldrin Arenas Darila. Maraming salamat. Kagalang-galang na Dr. Victor C. Canyeso Jr., ang Pangulo ng Biliran Province State University at pangalawang tagapangulo ng lupon ng mga rehente ng universidad. Kagalang-galang Rogelio J. Espina. Dr. C. Canyeso Jr., ang Pangulo ng Biliran Province State University Gobernador ng Lalawigan ng Biliran. Mga rehente ng pamahalaang lupon ng Universidad ng Lalawigan ng Biliran, mga kinatawan ng panlalawigang pamahalaan, mga kasapi ng Konsehong Pang-Akademiko at Konsehong Pang-Administratibo ng BIPSU, mga pangalawang pangulo, mga dekano at dekana ng iba't ibang kolehiyo at sektor pang-akademiko, mga guro at kawani
mga mapag-arugang magulang ng mga magsisipagtapos at ang pangunahing tauhan sa pagtitipong ito ang mga magsisipagtapos sa taong 2021, isang maalab na pagbati at mapagpalayang araw sa inyong lahat. Isang karangalan ang maghatid ng talumpati para sa magsisipagtapos sa taong ito. Bilang komisyonado ng Komisyon sa Lalong Mataas na Edukasyon, at tagapangulo ng lupo ng mga rehente ng pamantasan ng lalawigan ng diliran, aking ipinaaabot ang taos-pusong pagbati sa mga magsisipagtapos ng mga titulong pang-akademiko, bunga ng inyong pagsisikap, pagpupunyagi at pagbabata upang maisakatuparan ang lahat ng mga kasanayan at karunungan na itinadhana ng inyong napiling larangan. Ito ay isang patunay lamang na ang inyong napamasa sa ngayon ang isang mahusay at dekalidad na edukasyon na inihanda ng pamantasan sa kabila ng pandemyang patuloy nating nararanasan sa kasalukuyan. Ang ating tema para sa araw na ito ang mga nagsipagtapos sa BIPSU, sumusulong tungo sa magandang kinabukasan ay isang bunsod para sa ating lahat na abutin ang pinakamataas na rurok ng tagumpay at taglayin ang kadalubhasaan upang patuloy na mapaglingkuran ang bayan ng may katapatan, kahusayan, integridad at panglipunang pananagutan. Bagamat maituturing na katangi-tangi ang araw na ito dala ng patuloy nating nararanasang pandemya, ito ay patunay lamang na ang inyong pagpupunyagi at pagsasakatupara ng mga gawain ay mga hakbang tungo sa isang mas malalim at mas makabuluhang misyon sa buhay. Ang mga kaganapan ngayon, ay siyang magdadala sa inyo sa lalong mas mataas na antas ng pamumuhay at pagiging buhay na nilalang. Patuloy na wa kayong maging matuwid, gumawa ng mabuti sa kapwa at maging mapagkandili sa inyong bayang Pilipinas. Ang seremonyang ito ang magsisilbing panimula ng inyong bagong gampanin sa buhay ang buhay na puno ng nakapupukaw na sandali at kagilagilalas na karanasan. Nawa ay mapaghandaan ninyong mabuti ang mga bagay na sadyang nakalaan para sa inyo sa patuloy na pagtubo at pagbuo ng pagkatao para sa inyong kapwa. Ang pagsasanay na ito ay isang pagtatalaga sa inyong mga tungkulin sa buhay. Mga tungkuling huhulma sa inyong pagkatao ng may kaakibat na prinsipyo, paninindigan at pagmamahal sa bayan. Hayaan ninyong taglayin ninyo sa inyong puso at sa inyong isipan ang mga pangunahing katangian ng katapatan, katarungan at etikal sapagkat ito ang mahahalagang sangkap sa pagiging ganap na Filipino. Sa puntong ito, nais kong kilalanin ang naiambag ng BIPSU sa pagpapatupad ng Flexible Learning Program na pinangunahan ni Pangulong Victor Cañeso bilang tagapangulo ng Pangrehiyong Kasunduan sa Flexible Learning. Marapatin yung batiin ko ang BIPSU sa inyong mahalagang papel na ginampanan ulang upang patuloy nating masuportahan ang mag-aaral habang sila ay nakikibaka sa mga hamo ng pandemya at kahirapan sa pagsasakatupara ng pag-aaral. Ating patuloy na itaguyod ang flexible learning bilang pagtalima sa iniaatas ng edukasyon ng bagong milenyo at itinatadhana ng ikaapat na pagbabagong industriyal. 
Ito na ang magiging sandigan na, ng ating pag-aaral. Hindi na muli tayong babalik sa tradisyonal na paraan ng pagtuklas ng kaalaman. Bagkus tayo ay yayakap sa makabago at mapagtanibagong larangan ng edukasyon at progresibong henerasyon. Ito ay isang paninindigan ng komisyon na ang mas mataas na edukasyong Filipino ay nararapat taglayin ang haraya, pamamaraan, proseso ng ikadalampu't isang siglo ng pag-aaral. Ang edukasyon ng bagong milenyo ay may kaugnayan sa makabagong paraan ng pagsasakatuparan ng mga revolusyonadong lapit sa pagtuturo at pagkatuto na kayang tumapat sa pandaigdigang pamantayan. Ang pandemyang ito ang nagbigay daan upang ating maunawaan at mapagtanto na ang mas mataas na edukasyong Pilipino ay kailangang mapagtagumpayan sa pamamagitan ng mga balangkas ng futures thinking. Ang pandemyang COVID-19 ang siyang nagbunsod sa ating lahat na baguhin ang tradisyonal na iskema ng edukasyon at nakaugli ang pamamaraan sa pag-aaral at bagkus mas pahalagahan ng edukasyong mananatili at pangmatagalang paglinang sa karunungan. Lubos na binago ng pandemya ang istruktura ng edukasyon na naging batayan para gumawa ng polisiya at inisyatiba at muling suriin ang mga umiiral na pamantayan at gawi sa sining ng pagtuturo at pagkatuto. Sa isang pag-aaral ni Pokrel et Shetri ng taong 2021, sinasabing ang COVID-19 ang siyang sanhi ng malaking pagkagambala ng sistema ng edukasyon sa ating kasaysayan na nakaapekto sa halos isang bilyon at ani na milyong mag-aaral sa humit sa humigit kumulang na dalawang daang bansa. Ang mga nakagawi ang paraan ng pag-aaral ay nabago. Ang paglipat mula physical o face-to-face -face, dungo sa flexible learning ay maaaring makapagbigay ng iba't ibang karanasan sa mag-aaral at mga guro. Ngunit kailangan nilang umangkop sa mga hinihingi ng pagkakataon may alternatibo man o wala. Kung kaya't ang sistema ng edukasyon sa mundo at ang pamayanang nagtataguyod nito ay kinakailangang yumakap sa konsepto ng edukasyon in emergency na kung saan ginagamit ang iba't ibang pamamaraan at plataporma upang maipagpatuloy ang pagtuturo at paggamit ng isang sistema na marahil ay hindi pa pamilyar sa lahat. Sa pandaigdigang pananaw naman, isang pag-aaral mula sa World Economic Forum na may pamagat na Challenges and Opportunities in the Post-COVID-19 World. Tinalakay dito na ang ating karanasan ay isang paalala na dapat nating suriin ang mga umiiral na istruktura at kaugalian na ating nakasanayan bago pa man magkaroon ng pandemya. Ito ay isang pamamaraan upang ating maunawaan na ang mga sistemang lipas na ay hindi na aangkop sa pangangailangan sa ngayon. Itinataguyod ng may akda ang new social contract na kung saan ang tao at ang mundong kanyang ginagalawan ay nakasentro sa usapin ng kaunlaran. Marapat lamang na ito ay iangkla sa maigting na pagkilala sa karapatan ng mga manggagawa. Dagdag pa rito, kailangan ng makabagong agenda na katatampukan ng mga sumusunod. Una, ang pagkakapantay-pantay ng kasarian sa lugar ng trabaho. Pangalawa, pagwakas sa hindi makatarungang kasanayan sa trabaho. Ikatlo, pagtigil sa mga paimbabaw na paglutas sa suliranin ng klima. 
at pang-apat, pagtiyak na ang korporasyon ay tiyak na ginagampanan ang kanyang tungkulin sa pagpapanatili ng angkop na kompetisyon at makatarungang pagtrato sa mga manggagawa. Sa isang lathala na inilimbag ng Ateneo Center for Organization Research and Development, ang mga panukalang reforma ay sinasangayuna ng mananaliksik na kung saan may pitong mahahalagang bagay na may mnemonic na rebuild na naglalayong panatilihin ang makabagong pamantayan sa paraan ng pagtatrabaho. Ito ay ang mga sumusunod. R for remote work. Ang pagsasagawa ng flexible work arrangement na umaayon sa wastong gastusi ng kumpanya bilang bahagi ng epektibong sistema ng pagtatrabaho sa panahon ng krisis at pandemya. Dahil sa remote work, nagiging sigurado ang kalidad ng trabaho at pagiging produk produktibo ng manggagawa, maging ito ay sa labas ng pangkaraniwang kapaligiran ng isang opisina. Letter E for Employee Support Para maging isang mabisang empleyado, kailangang gampanan ang trabaho ng may magandang relasyon sa kapwa-empleyado. Sa panahon ng krisis at suliranin ang pagtutulungan at magandang relasyon sa kapwa ang dapat isaalang-alang upang maging epektibong elemento sa larangan ng pagbabago. B for Business Contingency Mahalaga rin na makita na ang manggagawa ay sakop ng isang umiiral na ano ukol sa mga hindi inaasahang pangyayari tulad ng kinakaharap nating pandaigdigang pandemya. Ang plano ng isang kumpanya ay isang paghahanda laban sa mga di inaasahang pagkagambala sa trabaho at nagbibigay ng katiyakan sa paghahanap buhay at malinis na daloy ng proseso ng isang organisasyon. U for Upskilling on Technology Ito ay isang mahalagang katangian, lalo na sa inyong henerasyon, na may malalim na pagkasangkot sa pagtupad ng Fourth Industrial Revolution. Kaya gamitin ang bawat oportunidad na makapagdudulot ng karunungan at makabuluhang kasanayan. I for IT Infrastructure Ito ay isang pagtitiyak na ang komisyon sa lalong mataas na edukasyon ay nakikipag-ugnayan sa kagawaran ng teknolohiyang pang-informasyon at komunikasyon o DICT sa pagbuo ng pamamaraan upang mas dalong mapabuti at mapaigting ang internet connectivity at accessibility. Ito ay pagtataguyod ng kalidad na edukasyon sa pamamagitan ng proyektong Smart Campus na nagkakahalaga ng 3 bilyong pisong pondo. L for Leadership Adaptiveness isa sa mga pamantayan na kailangang isaalang-alang sa hinaharap na trabaho ay ang makabuluhan na kalidad ng isang tagapagturo o mentor. Laging tatandaan na ang tunay na leader ay sensitibo sa pag-unawa at pagkakamit ng husay at galing sa anumang larangan ng trabaho at tungkulin sa buhay. Letter D for Design Thinking for the Future Ang mga nagsipagtapos na tulad ninyo ay dapat na may kakayahang tumanaw ng malayuan at may planong pangmatagalan. Kaakibat ng abilidad na ito ay ang kakayahang sumuri ng pansariling kaundaran na tunay na magiging makabuluhan sa anumang suliraning kakaharapin. Ang pitong elemento na ito 
ay napagsama-sama upang taglayin ang kalidad ng trabaho at gawing matatag ang buhay profesional. Ang pagtiyak na kayong lahat ay may seguridad sa trabaho na magtatagal sa kabila ng pandemya. Kayo ay binibigyan ng sapat na kakayahan upang kayo ay maging mat at umangkop sa kadalubhasaan na harapin ang inyong mga kinabukasan. Ang mundo ay volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous na nangangailangan ng isang book of proof na profesional at ako ay nakakasiguro na ang produkto ng BIPSU ay nagtataglay ng lahat ng kakayahan sa pagharap ng hamon sa mundo. Sa mga magsisipagtapos sa Biliran Province State University, isang maalab na pagbati sa inyong lahat para sa isang natatanging tagumpay na inyong natamo. Ituring nyo na ang pagtitipong ito ay isang pagkilala sa inyong sigasig, pagsisikap at pagtsatsaga upang maisakatuparan ang mga layunin at kumpletuhin ang ang inyong pagtatapos ay simula ng panibagong yugto sa inyong buhay na kamamangha at nakakaingganyo at bagong pagtanaw sa kinabukasan. Magsilbi sana ang pagkakataong ito bilang isang natatanging inspirasyon upang patuloy kayong magpunyagi para sa mga pagsubok at oportunidad na tatahakin habang inyong hinaharap ang realidad ng buhay. Nawa ang pagtatapos na ito ay magdala sa inyo sa mas mataas na level ng dignidad bilang isang individual na may kakayahang magpastol ng kapwa-tao para sa mas makatao at mapagmalasakit na lipunan. Paglalakbay para sa kinabukasan, kaagi, kaakibat ang hamo ng pandemya. Kayo mga magsisipagtapos ang magiging instrumento ng matatag na edukasyon para sa tapat na paglilingkod sa bansa. Ang inyong responsibilidad ngayon ay magsisilbi sa ating inang bayan ng may kalakip na integridad at kahalagahan ng paglilingkod pampubliko. Bilang pangwakas, hayaan ninyong ibahagi ko sa inyo ang taglay na dunong ni Steve Jobs na kanyang ibinihagi sa mga nagsipagtapos sa Stanford University noong 2005. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most importantly, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. Muli, maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Padayon sa lahat ng magsisipagtapos. Mabuhay po ang Dipsu. The awarding of the plaque of recognition to the keynote speaker, and it reads, Republic of the Philippines Biliran Province State University plaque of recognition is proudly presented to Commissioner Aldrin A. Darilag for his meritorious service and invaluable support rendered as keynote speaker during the 42nd commencement exercises for the class of 2020 of the Biliran Province State University Biliran Campus held August 18, 2021 at the Biliran Province State University given this 8th day of August 2021. Signed, SUC President 3, Dr. Victor C. Caniezo Jr.
Mr. President, as a Dean of the School of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources, I have the honor to present to you 19 graduates in Bachelor of Science in Agriculture, 12 graduates in Bachelor of Science in Agribusiness, 6 graduates in Bachelor of Science in Fishery Technology, and 5 graduates in Bachelor of Science in Forestry who have satisfactorily completed the academic requirements for graduations for your conferment. Mr. President, as the chairperson of the Department of Teacher Education, I have the honor to present to you 31 graduates in Bachelor of Secondary Education and 14 graduates in Bachelor of Elementary Education who have satisfactorily completed the academic requirements for graduation for your confirmation. By virtue of the power and authority vested in me by the Board of Regents, as President of the Biliran Province State University through Board Resolution Number 35 Series of 2020, and with the recommendation of the University Academic Council, I do hereby confer upon you the title of your respective degree with all the rights, honors, and privileges, as well as obligations and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. Congratulations. The graduates with Latin honors from the School of Teacher Education, Bachelor of Elementary Education, Sumayan Lorraine, Bosali Biliran Biliran, Cum Laude. The graduates of School of Agricultural Sciences in Natural Resources, Bachelor of Science in Agriculture, Abogado Christian, Bato Biliran Biliran. Alagase Fidel Jr., Kawayan Leite Leite. Corpin Neri, Canila Biliran Biliran. Diliera Eric, Consuegra Leite Leite. De Paz Janilin, San Isidro Biliran Biliran. Duran Kitaniel, Tinokdogan Leite Leite. Fuentes Raymark, San Isidro Biliran Biliran. 
Helizon Kenneth, San Roque Biliran Biliran. Guliot Chari, Burabot Biliran Biliran. Lucero RG, Bato Biliran Biliran. Nastor Prince Flood, Burabot Biliran Biliran. Ochea Jasper, Langgau Kabukgayan Biliran. Palconet Pablo, Kanila Biliran Biliran. Rosales Vincent, Tinokdogan Leite Leite. Rosilio Emadel, San Roque Biliran Biliran. Santos Jeline, Salog Leite Leite. Satore Jomel, Publason Leite Leite. Silvano Lito, Sanggalang Biliran Biliran. Villena Ariel, Kawayan Leite Leite. The graduates of Bachelor of Science in Agribusiness. Ando Geraldine, Palakit Kabukgayan Biliran. Bulante Junri, Matikaa Ormok City. Darantino Melvin. San Roque Biliran Biliran Ibaho Kenneth Andrew Pulita Biliran Biliran Valguera Anneli Esperanza Kabukgayan Biliran Hervasho Aileen San Roque Biliran Biliran Lan Jerlin, Hulita Biliran Biliran. La Resma Jomari, Bunga Kabukgayan Biliran. Palikte Charmin, San Roque Biliran Biliran. Retanal Shalome. Villa Inahe Biliran Biliran Rosales Paul Bakhaw Leite Leite Taboso Gaspar Pinangumhan Biliran Biliran The graduates of Bachelor of Science in Fishery Technology Elorde Viulime, Baso Kabukgayan Biliran. Helezon Rodolfo Jr., Sanggalang Biliran Biliran. Habilgas Rodel, Sanggalang Biliran Biliran. Matuginas Jude Michael, Tukdaw Kawayan Biliran Pable Leyalin Palaraw Leite Leite Sanchez Marilu San Isidro Biliran Biliran The graduates of Bachelor of Science in Forestry Vaso Alondra, Kulasi Leite Leite.
Lozada Marites, Palarao Leite Leite. Mapula Pauline Crisia, Villanueva Calubian Leite. Powell Maria Cristina, Palarao Leite Leite. Villarreal Dizame, Balite Kawayan Piliran. The graduates of the School of Teacher Education, Bachelor of Secondary Education, Major in Technology and Livelihood Education. Adorable Mark Francisco, Tinokdugan Leite Leite. Araneta Edna, Masagausaw Kawayan Biliran. Yag Bernardo, Hupa Biliran Biliran. Cabalias Cedric, Consuegra Leite Leite. Cabalias Julito, Consuegra Leite Leite. De la Cruz Ralph Dello, Culasi Leite Leite. De La Rosa Arlu, Kulasi Leite Leite. De Masilan Baby, San Isidro Biliran Biliran. Elias Carla, Julita Biliran Biliran. Garilio Glenda, San Isidro Biliran Biliran. Hermosilia Lilibet, San Isidro Biliran Biliran. Matayom Eva, Consuegra Leite Leite. Sanchez Judian, San Isidro Biliran Biliran. Suposo Romalin, Consuegra Leite Leite. Torres Cherry May, Bacau Leite Leite. Major in Mathematics. Arnosa J. Henry, Basud Leite Leite. Canoy Ray Lito, Burabot Biliran Biliran. Del Rosario John Mar. Kawayan Leite Leite. Gabisay Flor de Liza, Kalanipawan Tacloban City. Holares Diza, San Isidro Leite Leite. Biliran Biliran. Las Doce Carl Angelo, Kawayan Leite Leite. Remitira Maricris, San Roque Biliran Biliran. Major in Biological Science. Corpin April Janice, Balakit Kabukayan Biliran. Langres Rosaline, Elizabeth Leite Leite. Lomot Romel, San Roque Biliran Biliran. Jimenez Rizame, Balakit Kabukayan Biliran. Mecaral Maria Letesha, Kalagisi Leite Leite. Paano Eden Gay, 
Magbangon Kabukgayan Piliran Puasa Rowell Ibas Leite Leite Civiliano Marian San Isidro Biliran Biliran Vallejos Rowell Tigbawan Leite Leite The graduates of Bachelor of Elementary Education Adorably Mercy Tinokdugan Leite Leite Apan Jaya Upun Leite Leite Arnais Grace San Isidro Biliran Biliran Bracamonte Marifel Burabot Biliran Biliran De La Cruz Richard Maanda Leite Leite Dilantar Algen, Burabot Biliran Biliran Duran Maria Mapol, Tinokdogan Leite Leite Mapa Ella May, Kawayan Leite Leite Rosales Emilio Jr. San Roque Biliran Biliran Rosales Jenilyn Tinokdogan Leite Leite Saboy Ayla Jel Busali Biliran Biliran Sopolmo Donnelyn Kulasi Leite Leite Villaren Warren Palarao Leite Leite At this juncture, let us hear a message from the Chairperson of the Commission in Higher Education, Honorable Prospero A. Divera III. Para sa class of 2021, isang mapagpalayang araw sa inyong lahat, hayaan niyong simulan ko ang aking mensahe sa isang mainit na pagbati at pagpupugay sa mga magsisipagtapos ngayong araw na ito. Today, while the situation has somehow improved compared to March of 2020, things are obviously far from how they were before and would probably not go back to the old normal. I understand your frustration of missing a live graduation, pero saludo ako sa inyo dahil napagtagumpayan ninyo ang mga hamon ng pandemia at naipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral sa kabila ng mga balakid at limitasyon. At ngayon ay mas handa na kayong harapin ang susunod na yugto ng inyong buhay. You and, you and your university were able to courageously respond to the needs of the times, move forward as one, and rise above the challenges. Now on the part of CHET, we acted quickly and conscientiously at the onset of the pandemic and devised ways to allow continued access to quality education through flexible modes of learning. In the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, we ensured that learning continued by adopting a policy of flexible learning. Sa aking pagpadyak sa iba't ibang pamantasan sa buong Pilipinas, Ako'y nabigyan ng pagkakataon na makausap, makasama, at makahalubilo ang mga mag-aaral 
guro at empleyado ng iba't ibang pamantasan at kolehiyo sa bansa. I heard stories of struggles in the midst of the pandemic. We recognize the diligence, patience, and hard work of both the administrators, the faculty, the staff, and most important, the students, for not allowing the pandemic to ruin your dreams and aspirations. Last February 2021, nakilala ko ang magkapatid na parehong tertiary education subsidy grantees sa Tibiao, Antique. Sila ay si Maria at Remejo Escudero mula sa University of Antique. Ang kanilang ikinabubuhay ay magtinda ng balut at pagtama ng pandemic. When they received their subsidy during the COVID-19 pandemic in May, Pagkatapos nilang gastusin ang kanilang test sa mga pangangailangan nila sa pag-aaral, ginamit nila ang natitirang test upang makabangon ang kanilang negosyo at makakuha ng panggastos sa pang-araw-araw na pag-aaral. Last month, when I was in Cebu, I met Renami Nunez. Si Renami ay test beneficiary ng dalawang taon na. Ginamit niya ang kanyang unang test subsidy para kabitan ng kuryente ang kanilang bahay. Dahil naawa siya sa kanyang kapatid na nag-aaral sa dilim. Her second subsidy was used to buy her first cell phone in her life and her third subsidy to buy a second-hand laptop for herself and her brother. She continues to study to better herself. She will be the first in her family to get a college education. A few weeks ago during my bike ride, I met Catherine Ehe who used her test subsidy para makapagpatayo ng sari-sari store at para ipagawa ang bubong ng kanilang bahay makatapos niyang bilhin ang pangangailangan niya for flexible learning. And soon, I hope to meet some of the test beneficiaries in your university. These stories of success from our scholars are the reason why this year we claim victory for free higher education. These stories are proof that the Duterte administration prioritizes free and quality education for our young people. It is also with pride and happiness that I share with you that even in the midst of the pandemic, more than 1.6 million Filipinos in more than 200 public universities now continue to receive quality higher education for free. Sa iba't ibang panig ng ating bansa, ay narinig ko na ang mga kwento ng tagumpay ng ating mga mag-aaral, lalong-lalo na ang mga nakakakuha ng test at tulong duno. From their success stories, we can already claim that free higher education under RA10931, the most important social legislation in the history of higher education, is a success. Overall, today, more than 2 million students are supported by the government amidst this global pandemic so that the students can continue receiving quality education and move closer towards the realization of their dreams. 
their dreams to improve themselves and to improve the plight of their families. As we therefore celebrate your graduation today, we look back at the years of hard work and determination, the unwavering commitment in your continuous quest for knowledge. Let your graduation remind you of the gains that you have achieved collectively and individually and the constant push to do better and to better yourselves as you enter the world of work. As you leave the portals of your university, I am optimistic that you will become active contributors to national growth and the competitiveness of our country. You have been equipped with the necessary competencies anchored on the university's core values. And so you must use this to make your distinctive mark in society by transforming lives. Never stop learning and continue to pursue activities that will serve as precursors of discovery to ensure continuous productivity and sustainability for our future generations. Once again, congratulations to the class of 2021. Mabuhay kayong lahat. The awarding of the plaque of recognition to our guest speaker. And the plaque reads, Plaque of Recognition is proudly presented to Chairperson J. Prospero E. De Vera III for his meritorious service and invaluable support rendered as guest speaker during the 42nd Commencement Exercises of Class 2020 of the Biliran Province State University Biliran Campus held August 23, 2021 at the Biliran Province State University given this 23rd day of August 2021 at the Biliran Province State University. Signed, University President, Dr. Victor C. Cañezo, Jr. Pledge of Loyalty. We, the graduates of Biliran Province State University Biliran Campus, Class of 2020, share the feelings of happiness after having received our diplomas as a tangible manifestation of our achievements in our years of study in our beloved alma mater, the Biliran Province State University. We stand to show our heartfelt gratitude to our parents for their untainted love and devotion, to our mentors who have provided guidance, virtues, hope, and courage to face with fortitude the varied complexities of life, molding our well-being and personalities. Finally, to God Almighty, the fount of wisdom and all knowledge. We humbly pledge to genuinely involve in any laudable cause for our country's progress under the true principles of democracy. Wherever we are and whatever we may be, we pledge to keep preserved with benevolence the prestige of the Biliran Province State University. You've broken down and Merry go round, then you can find the fighter. But I see it in you, so we gon' walk it out and move mountains. We gon' walk it out and move mountains. And I'll rise up, I'll rise like the day.
silences and quiet And it feels like it's getting hard to breathe And I know you feel like dying But I promise we'll bring the world to its feet And move mountains Bring it to its feet And And I'll rise up, I'll rise like the day, I'll rise up, I'll rise unafraid, I'll rise up, and I'll do it a thousand times again, for you, for you, for you.
requesting all faculty of Billy Ren Campus to please fall in line in front for your photo ops.